Let me cover some theory before we begin, and I'll start with the Gaussian blur. Who am I kidding? Let's check out the diner. Other coders, today we're going to write the code that will let us to control the Chrome Diner just with our gestures. This video is influenced by Harshal Patel, so many thanks to this guy. So for this project, we're going to be using Jupyter Notebooks and a couple of libraries. One of them is called OpenCV, so first we'll need to pip install it if it's not installed on your computer already. Another library that will help us with this task is called PyAutoGUI. PyAutoGUI will help us to programmatically control the mouse and keyboard without any user interaction. So we'll need to pip install PyAutoGUI as well. And now we can import some other libraries such as NumPy. If you're not familiar with the NumPy, I've got a wonderful one hour video on this channel on the subject. Other imports will include, of course, the CV2, which is an open CV library we just installed, and PyAuto GUI, which doesn't have apparently the short alias. So we have to import it using the full name. And another little library that will help us to calculate the square roots, the cosines and so forth, called math. All right, now that we've done with our imports, we can begin to write our main block of code. First of all, we need to open the camera and set up the rectangle. In order to do that, I will utilize the method called video capture from OpenCV. So now while the camera is opened, we need to perform our operations. Therefore, what we need to do, we need to begin the while loop saying while capture is opened. And within this while loop, we'll specify the actions. First of all, we'll need to capture frames from the camera. I will use the capture.read and I'll store the result in the variables called ret and frame. After that, we'll need to get hand data from the rectangle subwindow. So we we'll specify the method rectangle from OpenCV library with a several parameters. And of course, we'll need to crop the image. So the next line will be responsible for cropping the image again, frame with several parameters. Now, once we've done with rectangle, we'll need to get on with the aforementioned Gaussian blur. Generally, we want to blur the image to smooth out some edges and convert the blurred image from BGR, such as blue, green and red, to HSV, which is hue, saturation and value because it is generally easier to filter out in HSV rather than with BGR. If you've got no idea what am I talking about, please leave a comment and I'll try to cover the basics of OpenCV and how this all witchcraft works later on. Because not only this is a cool topic, it is actually also a hot topic and employers are prepared to pay good money for specialists that actually know how to do this stuff. All right, now that we set up our blur and we change the color space from BGR to HSV, we need to create a binary image. So we'll define a mask too. What does that mean? Well, we're basically turning our image into a black and white image, but the only difference with um, the photography is that there will be no scale, so no gray or light um, black or dark white, stuff like that. It will be just black and white. Here, we now define the kernel for morphological transformation. And after that, we can apply this morphological transformations to filter out the background noise. Long story short, this is a set of operations that process images based on shapes. 
So here we're going to use such operations as dilation and erosion. So basically dilation increases the white region in the image or size of foreground object increases. And erosion erodes away the boundaries of foreground object. In other words, all pixels near the boundary will be discarded depending upon the size of uh, the kernel. And the next two lines will apply Gaussian blur and the threshold. It is actually useful for removing further noise, like it removes the high frequency content such as noise and edges from uh, the image. So we achieve that by basically blurring or smoothing the image using the Gaussian kernel. When this is done, we can begin with finding and drawing contours. So in general, each contiguous section of pixels is referred to as a contour. So essentially what uh, this will do, this will draw an outline to every white section of the frame. So here we have two variables called contours in hierarchy and we use the method called find contours from the OpenCV library. And of course, many things can go wrong here. So we should really try to wrap um, our code in this try and catch blocks. So I'm going to do something like, um, like that here. I should also mention that contours, they form some kind of a hierarchy. And if you want to learn more, please refer to the official documentation. It is described there pretty well. First, we need to find a contour with the maximum area. So in order to do that, I'm using a simple max function and I'm passing as the arguments, the contour and lambda and the method contour area provided by the OpenCV library. All right, once it's done, we need to create a bounding um, rectangle around the contour. Now we need to find a thing called the convex hull. So in short, a convex object is the one with no interior angles greater than 180 degrees. And hull is basically the exterior or the shape of the object. Therefore, the convex hull of a shape or a group of points is a tight fitting convex boundary around the points or the shape. So here with this code, we are basically drawing a contour and now we need to find the convexity defects. So basically we'll need to find any deviation of the contour from its convex hull. And OpenCV library provides a convenient method called convexity defects. And now that we established a variable that will uh, literally be our defects counter, we can use the cosine rule to find uh, angle of the far point from the start and end point. This will be the convex point that might be represented by, for example, fingertips. And although this formula might look a bit intimidating, Actually, if you can look um, for the cosine rule in um, the internet, in the Wikipedia, for example, this is just a representation of this formula in code. And now that we've done with that, so this is basically the main math in our code, we can get on with um, saying that if an angle is um, less than or equal to 90. Let's draw a circle at the far point. So I'm going to use the if condition. And basically, once the condition is met, we will um, make it to press space. So it sends the signal to the program saying this is equal to like pressing space. 
So if count defects is more than or equal to four, we'll use finally the uh, pi auto GUI and we'll make it press space. And we'll also display a word. Let's say that word will be jump because we will use this uh, code to run the Chrome Dino and this is what we the behavior that we expect from Dino so normally we would expect it to jump once we press space but now obviously we'll use our gesture to pass this um, control key to the program all right so we are almost done here what we need to do now we need to put the accept portion of this try block and I'm going to use pass because um, I can't be bothered but you may um, write it properly and what I also want to do I want to implement this um, imshow method so I want to show the images and we also need to introduce some key to break from the execution of the program and in order to do that I will use the wait key method and in here I'll use the Q um, keyboard key and basically this key will terminate all this madness and once this is done we'll need to release the capture and destroy all windows and that ladies and gentlemen is about it so let's give it a try and see how i will get on to be honest i'm not a pro uh, chrome dino jumper all right that was v please give this video emperor's thumbs up toll the bell and subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.